Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the QNAP 2Bay NAS. This is their TS-262 model. We had the four gigabyte of RAM version. QNAP did send me this product, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. Also wanna give a huge shout out to Seagate for hooking us up with two awesome NAS drives. So we got the Iron Wolf Pro, 10 terabyte drive, and we have two of those that we'll be using in this QNAP NAS. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Before looking at the contents, I do wanna point out that I could tell our sample had been opened before it arrived here, so I'm not sure what QNAP did or didn't do, so hopefully everything you see here is what you get as well. So, product literature with warranty information, we have our power cable and power supply right here. Take a look at the specs, get a feel for that. We did get a Cat5e network cable, and we have screws right here. We have eight silver screws and seven black screws. And then last but not least, the NAS itself. Let's look at that in more detail. Looking at the NAS from the top first, you'll notice towards the front, we have a sticker walking us through the product tech specs. It has an Intel Celeron N4505 dual core processor up to 2.9 gigahertz. This is equipped with two M.2 slots, Gen 3 speeds, and it fits M.2 2280s. One PCIe Gen 3 expansion slot if you want to add like a 10 gig card or something like that. This is equipped with 2.5 gig and it has an HDMI 2.0 port on it up to 4K 60 from that. Now we'll look at it from the front. We got QNAP's logo and branding. A couple of dots here that we can use to remove the cover to pop out and get access to our dual 3.5 inch drive bays right here with trays. Those can slide in or out. On the right side, we have a couple different buttons here, some indicator lights, and a USB port. Here's a look at the right side. We have a sticker with service information and cloud installation instructions. Looking at the left-hand side, we got some venting here and our lock and unlock lever. Here's a look at the very bottom. We have four feet, some additional product info. You'll notice another lock and unlock icon right here to match up the case if you want to get access to the inside. Now looking at the back side, we have our PCIe expansion slot up at the top, reset button, three additional USB ports, HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gig LAN, and we have our power plug down at the bottom, Kensington security lock as well. Now let's look inside the unit, let's remove the cover. So I went ahead, I popped out the two trays and I took this cover off the front. But the key here is you gotta remove the two Phillips head screws on the back side right there. And then you're just gonna position this to the unlock position. So I went ahead, I just pressed in, and then this cover will just come straight off. So now you can just kind of lift it up and out of the way. So just like that, and then the cover will pop right off. And now we can look inside. Here's our expansion slot right there. We have our first M.2 slot right there labeled one. And then we have our second one hiding right here, labeled two. Both of those, one and two, right there in there. And then your expansion slot on the other side. So pretty cool, right? Take a look at that, get a feel for everything here. With the trays removed too, looking at the inside, we also got our two hard drive slots down there. So pretty nifty, small form factor and design. They really fit a lot into this. Now let's go ahead, let's get it set up. First things first, let's get our hard drives installed. We already have one tray all set and ready to go. And then we'll just drop it right down in. To get the hard drive in the tray, make sure you have it lined up properly. I just start on a side and I make sure those two are snapped in first. And then I come to the other side and we repeat the same process again, just getting everything lined up and now it fits. And we even have this little pull option there too, if need be on this side. But there we go, we have them both installed, super simple, love that tool free installation. Then just line it up, drop it right in place and we can take our cover and it snaps right back on we can also go ahead and lock that for good measure now let's go ahead we're going to plug in our power cord and cable as well as our network connection all right so we have power plugged in we have a green light on the included power supply we also have two lights on our network cable there which is great to see and now looking at it from the front nothing is illuminated right here because we haven't turned anything on so let's go ahead let's push the power button and now we have a green light and some other lights coming on and I can feel the fan blowing out the back. 
So now let's go ahead and check out the software. With this unit powered on, we're now at our computer where we have the QFinder software downloaded where we can view our device. So you'll notice we already have the TS253D set up and now we're trying to set up our TS262. So it identifies the model, the operating system, your IP address and device name. So make sure in your case, if you're setting up your first one, you should only have one item here, but if not, make sure you pick the correct one by name, IP address, model number, you should be able to find exactly what you're looking for. So you can go ahead, you can select that device. And now we have a couple different options up at the top, we can log in, or we can set the configuration. So let's go ahead, let's set configuration. From there, we're taken to this screen where we have our start smart installation. So we're going to select that. And let's go ahead, we have our current firmware. Let's check for updates, we'll see if there's any firmware updates. So the latest available, Looks good, so we'll go ahead now and we'll update. Might as well do that now before we get everything set up. Then you'll be at this screen where you can name your NAS, add a username, password, and confirm your password. So go ahead, get that populated, then select next. Now we're at this screen where we can set the date and time and then go ahead and select next. Next, we're prompted to configure our network settings. You can choose between an automatic IP address or if you wanna use a static IP address. When you're done, hit next. Now we can view a summary of all of our information. We can quickly go back and edit anything as needed. And if we're happy with the results that we're seeing, we can go ahead and select apply. Then we have a warning screen right here to initialize. We're gonna go ahead and do that and now it's working on applying the settings. So it didn't even take a minute and now the screen has changed. So it does say it'll take several minutes, but currently now you'll notice that it's starting up a bunch of the services. And all in now under five minutes, we have arrived at the congratulations screen right here where we can go into our NAS now and manage it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here's the login screen where we'll see the name of our NAS up here, as well as the spot to enter our username and password. So go ahead and log in. All right, so now we're into our NAS right here, you'll probably have a couple of disclaimers and things to accept permission wise. And you're probably looking at a storage in snapshot overlay on your screen should look something like this with a welcome message to storage and snapshots. If you're not, you can just select it from the list of apps like I just did. And it gives you a nice walkthrough of what it's like to create pools and blocks and snapshots and all that good stuff. So that can be done right here and you can use it within file station five. I spend a lot of time in file station myself, sharing files with contractors over the internet. We have our ability to create a new storage pool right here if you want. So pick and choose and configure that as you see fit. I'm not gonna be creating a pool right now. We're going straight to just a new volume and you have thin, thick or static volume options. This is just for my own personal preference. I'm building this as I need it. You may have different needs, but hopefully this helps you just see some of the different options. So for us, we're gonna be doing a static volume here. We're gonna select next. We're gonna select both of our disks. We want RAID 1. So basically one drive is gonna be for data, one's gonna be for protection. RAID 0, we could use both drives, but make sure you have a good backup plan. Or JBOD if you prefer no failure as well. So really up to you on what you want to do. But for us, this is what we need. So, and then we're going to select next and we have our data vault one right there, the capacity. We're going to select next, take a look at that. And then we're going to go ahead and select finish. Now everything's going to be erased before we continue. And now it's going to work on getting everything set up. We got a little notification over here that it started and now we wait. All right, we got this prompt on the screen. It's being created. There's a start notification again. When it's ready, you can start to store data by creating a shared folder in file station. Cool, select close. And now it's currently formatting. We're at 99%. All right, we got the notification down here that it's completed and currently the status is showing that it's creating default folders for us. Now we have some more data that's populated right here. It's taken a couple of minutes though, but it says ready and currently at 41% optimizing. There's our static volume under the type, our capacity and our percent used right here with our alert level. Now let's pull up file station so we can see the newly created folder. It's the public folder right here and it does have a recycle bin. I really like 
this feature. I've used the recycle bin quite a bit, especially when I'm sharing this folder and people delete certain things. It's nice to be able to have a recycle bin right there, especially if you're not using anything with the snapshot, which we aren't in our configuration. So I love that we have the recycle bin that comes in clutch, but we can add new folders here, share folders, you get the idea. And then you can add users under the control panel section, select users, and you can create new users right here and then adjust their permissions based on their profile. All of that can be done in this section. So I spend a quite a bit amount of time there and within file station. There's tons of other apps you can download to plenty I don't even know about. But in this case, you might want to give your NAS cloud access as well too. So you could search cloud and you could download my QNAP cloud right there. So that's going to be downloading for us very easy to find the apps that you're looking for and to get them installed on your NAS. And then eventually it will show up right here on your main home screen. And then depending on what you're trying to accomplish, this is all from a creator's perspective. We use this to manage all of our current edits and videos. You can also back this up off site if you want with another NAS, which is cool. So app center again, and that's going to be your hybrid backup. So hybrid backup sync, so HBS3, and we can install that as well. You have to walk through all of those settings. This isn't gonna be a tutorial video on my QNAP Cloud or HBS3, but again, there's a lot of functionality you can unlock with a NAS like this. And now you'll notice both QNAP Cloud and HBS3 are added to our home screen. Probably should have showed you this earlier, but there is a built-in performance test so you can see the read speeds on your NAS. So looking at disk one, we got almost 248 megabytes per second read speeds. And for disk two, we got almost 259 megabytes per second. For those wondering, by default, you should be able to access your NAS from your Windows network settings. So in our case, we located it under computers right here and we can select it and that's gonna bring up our login. So we need to enter our credentials to connect to our NAS. So use your username and password to connect. So we just entered in and sure enough, there we go. We have our first public folder right here with the recycle bin. So everything is working as it should. Now let's have some fun. I'm gonna paste almost two terabytes of video footage onto our NAS, just so we can see the speeds that we're getting here. So take a look, 250, 260 megabytes per second, but I expect that to fluctuate but keep that in mind, that's what we're seeing right there. 2.5 gig LAN here is what we have. At our network, we actually have a 10 gig network. But anyways, that's what you're seeing right there in the real world as we're copying over a ton of videos. Again, we should see some highs and lows there, but that's close to the performance test that we were getting for the read speeds of basically 250, 260 megabytes per second for our write speeds in the real world, going over a network with massive 4K video files. We're getting close to that for our write score of about 250 right now, 230. So right in there is what we're getting performance wise with those drives over our network with that 2.5 gig connection. And really quickly, I'll click around a couple more settings for you, but up in the left hand corner, that's your main menu. Take a look at all the apps and everything from that layout if you want. Then we have a search bar right here. We also have current tasks that are running. So right now it's still synchronizing everything right there shows you the rundown of how much time's left. We have a malware remover is finished. So if we had external devices, we could view those right there. No new notifications, but there's our notifications, all error and warning messages. Then we can learn more about our particular NAS and we can locate it, restart it, shut down all of that. Then we have the three dots for more section. That's gonna give us a couple of features, whether it's help language, desktop preferences, customer service, information, all that good stuff right there. Then we have our notice board. So take a look at all of our notifications right there. And then we also have our dashboard in real time, giving us our system health, temps, fan speeds, resource monitoring, all of that right there. So a nice helpful dashboard. And then down at the bottom, you'll notice we can go to the MyQNAP Cloud website, utility or feedback. And then we have multiple pages here too. If you wanna add multiple apps on different screens, you can do that right there within the layout. And then the bottom left-hand corner, we have the um, trash can icon here. 
So that brings up file station for us. I definitely recommend spending a minute or two in the notice board to go over some of the getting started features that they have. You definitely want to create that QNAP ID to give yourself access to your device remotely to manage everything. I decided since I had a couple extra NVMe SSDs just collecting dust here in the studio that I'd add some cache drive. So let's look at that really quick. Under storage and snapshots, we go to cache acceleration. We select the plus icon. We have a brief introduction here here to show you how it works. Then we can select next. There's the two drives right there identified for us, both identical and they have 512 gigabyte capacities. Then we can choose our cache type. Do we want read only, read and write, or do we want just write only? And it walks you through the preferred settings for each. So there's write only if you want to read about it. There's read only if you want to read about it. And then here's read and write if you want to read about that. So we're gonna do read and write as well as RAID 1 and select next. We'll leave over provisioning at 10%. So our cache mode can be random IO or all IO. We're gonna do all IO here. So bypass block size is now grayed out. We'll select next. And then we have our volume right there. Select next. And there we go. We have our summary here and we can select create. And then we have our prompt here, select I understand and then hit okay. And here we go. We can now see our cache acceleration and it's currently initializing, but super simple and straightforward to set up. So I've been a QNAP customer for a couple of years now and so far so good. So I expect the same longevity and quality with this new unit as we put it into service. As my business needs have grown and changed throughout the years, it's nice to know that I can stay in the QNAP ecosystem and they have apps and features that I never knew about that I didn't even think I would ever need that now I I do. So whether it's creating your own cloud and you want to have cloud access to share files, maybe it's HBS3 hybrid backup sync for off-site storage, things along those lines. This is a very capable NAS. It's not just a massive external hard drive. It can be that if you want, but there's tons of features I don't even know about yet that I continue to encounter as my needs change and something comes up. So longevity, I hope it lasts just as long, if not longer than my current one, which is still running great 24 seven for a couple of years without any issues. My biggest complaint isn't really a complaint because they have so many different models. You can find the one that you're looking for. I'd love 10 gig and more NVMe storage, which they do have available it just costs a lot more. So with that being said, I like to do the DIY route myself, but for a system like this, it's really about the software and it's nice to already have that all bundled together and done for me right out of the box and truly is plug and play if you know what you're doing. And if not, if you're self-taught like myself, then you should be able to hopefully limp through between forums, YouTube videos, and if you have to reach out to their customer service, which I have in the past, they'll be able to help you tackle whatever you got going on.